podcast all about anxiety, depression, and putting so many different projects on your plate that don't have to exist, but you've decided they need to be done. And hey, why not have three major things happen within a singular month and give yourself your own deadline to cause your own stress? Because you know what? I am sick of having external stress. Let me at least make my own. It's like having a DIY bath bomb where it might be a little crumbly. It might be a little messed up, but maybe I enjoy it more than the store-bought one, even though it really messes up with your plumbing, guys. I don't know if you know that, but you should really be careful with your bath bombs because it'll just fuck up everything. You'll do that thing where you're taking a shower and you just suddenly have a foot-deep pool beneath you, and I'm not saying that's me. Uh, You know, COVID's made things really interesting with maintenance requests in my complex. They said they only want to do... Uh, emergency requests, which I totally get. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually true, but I have some things that need to be done, like getting my air filters changed, which I haven't done since I've lived here and we're approaching the third year mark and I realized I'd forgotten to ever do that. So it's like things like that where I need them to come in and do it, but now I'm afraid to ask because what if I'm that person who's like, this is an emergency? Uh, but I think air filters actually are a safety. Ha- anyway, who cares? This isn't about that. And you know, whatever, I'll burn the house down. Woohoo. Anyway, I'm here. Why am I here? That's a great question. Um, I'm worried <laughs> for my sanity because lately I've been kind of, what's the word? I've had an oatmeal brain, uh, where I'm just mushy. And maybe there's some nutrients in there, but it's not vibrant. It is not bouncing. I am not uh, fully functioning. The hamster wheel, uh, my hamster has had too many donuts and is just struggling, struggling to put one foot in front of the other. Uh, So I'm, I'm not firing on all cylinders right now, guys. And I think it's because I've just stopped having movement in my life. Physically and metaphorically, I guess, mindfully, uh, I'm just not as stimulated. I have been, you know, reading a lot of like beach reads and I highly enjoy that. It's been very relaxing. I'm quite stressed these days. And so not having to pick apart a book or anything, I think is wonderful. And I think that we should not be as snooty in all of literature necessary because sure, maybe there isn't some deeper meaning to the girl who once worked for a big corporate job and something goes horribly wrong and she has to go home. But look, it's her high school love who's all cranky for mysterious reasons and a complete asshole, but we fall in love with him. You know, maybe there's not like a real deep meaning there, but I think those books have their own place and they know what they're supposed to do and it's supposed to take my mind off of shit and I don't have to deep dive into thinking about anything. That being said, though, I've done that for a hot second. I am now just like constantly watching the same TV shows Basically, I'm not having a lot of new brain fodder to really inspire me or do anything. I've kept myself in this little cesspool, the shower, if you will, with the clogged drain. And I'm getting tired of it, and it's starting to affect my day-to-day functioning. Uh, You know, even as simple as coming up with a topic for this podcast down to having normal conversations with humans. I'm actually at a point where I can't say complete sentences anymore. I, like I say a word and it just is super grammatically incorrect. And I know it. And I normally talk quite eloquently if I do say so myself, despite, you know, what you may hear on this podcast. Uh, but um, it's not coming through. And I think a lot of that is stress and I'm not recognizing it. And I I don't know, I think it's more physically manifesting itself in me. So overall, I am, I'm like, okay, but I think I'm more not okay than I think I am. But it's not bad, if that makes sense. On my not okay thermometer I have, I'm like at a chill, cool, like 50 degrees, I would say. Nothing too much. If you're in the Celsius, I have no idea what the fuck that translation would be. How about it's a brisk fall day? Like you're wearing a coat, but your nose isn't burning. (laughs) That's the weather report from Ingus IT. <laughs> Since I am lacking idea, and I'm someone who likes to have idea, <laughs> I don't know why am I saying that like it's a weird con- like idea. I have idea. I am idea. Fuck it. See, this is what I'm talking about. Since I am lacking brain generation of any sort, inspiration, creativity, I feel like, or just any sort of uh, actually doing something with my days, I decided that needs to change. And luckily, right around the corner is November. 
And every November for the past four years, I always get it wrong however many times I've done this, but let's just go with four for now. Maybe it's five. We'll see. I participate in National Novel Writing Month, NaNoWriMo, and it's what it sounds like. You write a novel in a month, a 50,000 word novel, and that takes some dedication. And it's supposed to show you that you can make time to write a book. Like if you can crank out any amount of, you know, hardcore, you know, section of words, even if you hit like 20K or something, it's supposed to show you that you can make room to write in your day to day life. And it doesn't have to be as chaotic as NaNoWriMo. But if you can do NaNoWriMo, surely you can sprinkle it into your normal life. So far, that hasn't happened to me. But I also have had my own like creative blocks. And I think I'm like getting through them finally. (laughs) God, I'm such like a hippie sometimes. It, I just want to slap myself, you know, but yeah, I don't know. You know, yeah, I definitely want other people to feel like they want to slap me. God, Elaine, stop it. Anyway, I always love doing NaNoWriMo because it's a creative project where I truly just let myself have fun. I don't try to write anything that I want to get published, which I think is something I need to just carry over into my writing style anyway, um, because that's when you kind of make it, you know, homework. But I mean, I will say there's like ideas I've done that I would never, you know, seriously do or ever make public to other people's eyes. So I I just do my silliest ideas there. And uh, because I have to write 50,000 words in a month and we have Thanksgiving in there. Um, I guess socializing won't be as much of an issue. But, you know, there's like other things going on. It's hard and you have to make a routine for yourself. Like you have to set aside time to write. You know, last year, the last two years, actually, I've had to do nano while doing a weekly podcast. And uh, podcasting takes up some time, guys. <laughs> Unless I do that thing where I cram it all into one day, but it's like a six hour process when I do that. And I'm very sad when I do that. But you can imagine I'm not going to write on those days unless I just never want to sleep or have any normal resting time as humans enjoy doing to reboot themselves. So I have that coming up, right? And I usually get a lot of ideas generating because I'm finally moving again and I have a goal and I'm very competitive in that way where it's not like I necessarily want to destroy my fellow writers. I think Nano is beautiful because everyone supports each other and it's one of my favorite things about it. It's a very lovely environment, very caring very community based, but I, for myself, like that there is this goal that seems almost out of reach to hit the 50,000 words and then I get it. So, uh, so far I've won. Last year I almost didn't and I think I was about to have a breakdown about it. No lie. Um, so I recognize that I have sort of a, a perfectionist issue coming into this. But anyway, the long story short there, because I'm going to get into this more, is that, okay, I'm writing a novel in November. Uh, What else do I have going on, Elaine? Yeah, okay, I'm working on my Christmas special, okay? Uh, Last year, I was all over my shit. I kind of, I knew what I was doing. I felt inspired. And yeah, I was still working on the Christmas special on top of my normal episodes on top of NaNo last year. But I feel like I'd gotten a lot more done in October than I had maybe this year. And I think that I had more ideas, at least for my episodes. I had started pre-recording in October, so I would kind of be set. I could float a couple of weeks. And I didn't do that (laughs) this year. I guess I still have time, right? But, like, I'm not – let's be real. Like, I'm not going to. No, I can. Positivity. Anyway, for now, it's nearing the end of October. I have not pre-planned anything. I don't even have ideas set for my November episodes. So that's basically being, like, I'm going to have to have – my brain make room to make ideas for weekly episodes. And I'm going to have to make it come up with ideas to write a fucking novel, which would require me to write 1,667 words in a day. Or if I was like me last year, totally skip a week and then write 10,000 words in one day and feel dead on the inside. So that's a lot, right? And the Christmas special requires a lot of extra attention because it's a lot of editing. It's a lot of moving parts And I don't even know what I want to write. I thought I had an idea. And then I sat down with myself and I was like, I have been unable to write this idea for three weeks now. And it's a beautiful idea, but maybe it's not meant for this medium. Maybe I need to write it out instead of have it be in uh, an audio special. So I came to that conclusion, which was pretty hard because it meant I had to start back at square one. 
Uh, but I think I have a new idea now, and it is very silly and stupid. So I think that's perfect, right? Uh, so I feel inspired by that. But I'm now going to have to write a script, <laughs> a script with many other people, write a book, and do daily episodes. Not daily. Oh, my God. Weekly episodes. Okay. To top it off, and this is going to be highly annoying for you, and I'm sorry, but I, and I'm not going to get into it. But you need to know that I have a mystery life project going on that is also highly consuming. And it takes up a lot of my day just thinking about it. And then I try to do it and I get stressed and frustrated doing it. And so it's just a lot. The Mystery Life Project is also just looming over me uh, uh, while I do all of this. Um, I'm also planning on buying a car, but I think I'm going to pull the trigger in December at this point because there's just no way that I can handle that this next month. So uh, to reiterate, I am writing a novel. I am releasing weekly episodes where I will be editing. I am also working on a script and managing voice talent and editing a Christmas special. And I have a mystery life project. (laughs) And I figured, wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. And I've had a lot on my plate before, but it's been a while. And I thought it might be helpful, mostly for me, but sure, for you too. For me to go through my list of things I'm going to do to make sure that I maintain my sanity throughout this creative month. Essentially, how am I going to funnel my creative energy into multiple projects? How am I not going to burn out? And how do I make sure I don't make this harder on myself than it needs to be? So if you are entering a creative month, or maybe you're in the middle of juggling a million different things, maybe it's not even creative projects, you just have like house renovations, and maybe you have a human you take care of, I'm not sure. But you know, it just I think maybe this might be helpful for you to hear what I'm doing. And if you think it's awful, then don't do what I'm doing. Um, Learn from my mistakes that maybe I don't foresee, but you do. Maybe you can tell me. I don't know. Or, you know what? It's fun to watch people crash and burn. So just let it happen. It's up to you. But I thought I would, uh, for my own sake, make a list of what I'm going to do to make sure I have a thriving November. So uh, here we go. The first step to juggling multiple creative projects and not losing your shit is to streamline your normal life shit. So this is in terms of like basic hygiene, chores, paying your bills, shit like that. If you let that get out of hand, that is a lot of time wasted. Uh, You know, maybe a normal day-to-day life, you don't have to crack the whip on yourself. But perhaps, perhaps you can maybe be a little more timely when you take out the trash. I am currently at the stage where I wait until I can't close the trash lid anymore. And then I have to do the thing where I get little mini bags for trash. And then I, I just stare at it and get so stressed. And then I finally crack one day and I go to the dumpster. Uh, My recycling overflows uh, until I can't quite enter my kitchen through the side, the side door. This is sounding more atrocious the more I talk about it. I promise it's not that bad, but maybe I can't. Maybe I can't. Actually, I take that back. Well, now I'm sad about myself. Anyway, basically, I have found in the past that when I dawdle on those things, it either never gets done and then I become sad because your environment can affect how you feel and how you think. So Sometimes it's like if my place is super cluttered, I feel stressed and gross. But if it's not, then I'm like, oh, cool, I have my shit together. And because of that, I have confidence to go into whatever I'm going to work on. So these are the things I've set aside (laughs) that I'm really hoping I do, right? Okay, so the first thing, I life hacked myself. I've come to realize with laundry, I am not always going to fold my clothes. Should I? Technically, yeah. I should. It would be nice to use the dresser I own instead of just this ambiguous floor pile that'll go on my bed, move to the floor, go to my bed, move to the floor, occasionally throwing things in the hamper. It's just a guessing game at this point. I've had stretches where I'm really on it, and then I've just had stretches where I, you know, it's been a while since I've had all my clothes folded, and I give up on trying to match socks, and so even if I fold a lot, there's still this ambiguous nomadic clothing heap that just travels about my room and my room kind of looks messy. So I realized that I kept fighting the wrong fight. I kept fighting the Elaine who wouldn't fold her clothes and I got mad at her. And then I spend that energy, the precious little energy I have, into anger and self-shaming that I have not folded my laundry. And I felt like I was a bad person because I wasn't folding my laundry. 
And then Amazon Prime Day happened and I lost my shit because fuck it, something's $2 off. I'm buying it. And I saw hangers and it just occurred to me, I can do whatever the fuck I want. And so I bought 60 hangers and I hung all of my clothes. I hung shit that in my head doesn't necessarily need to be hung, like graphic tees, fold them up, put them away. But like, Why should I try to fight a system that isn't working for me? It's okay, maybe, if I'm not the kind of person that's going to fold their clothes. I'm lucky enough to have a pretty good-sized closet right now in my life. All of the clothes I've just been putting off, folding, and putting away, it took like two seconds, put it on a hanger, put it in my my closet, and then I got excited and I I rainbow organized it because I've been watching that, like, new organizer show on Netflix, which I don't know how I feel about it. It's like so-so. It's kind of basic, uh, but they do the rainbow order. I've also been watching some hoarders, so I I have feelings about my lifestyle right now. (laughs) But mostly I'm just like shocked and ecstatic that I have hangers and I was able to do basically all my laundry. I still have this tiny little pile left, but it's all done and it's organized and I can see everything. I haven't been able to see all of my clothes in so long, which here's the the beautiful thing. That's going to have effects on everything else. Because I'm going to be able to see my clothes, I'll be able to get dressed faster in the morning. I won't feel as rushed. I won't feel like I'm behind already in the day. And then I think that it just trickles into everything else. So I don't start my day with uh, stress and as much decision fatigue. So that's a great example of like just a little thing to get my shit together. Okay, how about every time I move my coffee table to work out, I vacuum. That'll work because I don't work out that often. Uh, But when I do, it's like, oh, it's already out of the way. Let's go ahead and just like vacuum a little bit. Even if I don't do like the whole floor or the whole house, like I'll at least have the main area vacuumed and uh, something will be clean. In the same vein, uh, maybe I should work out more because having the blood pumping helps me have better ideas. I, I'm more awake. Uh, my body is energized and therefore so am I. Um, it's like probably the joy I used to get from coffee, but I don't I don't have that anymore. So <laughs> now I have to work out. Um, I'm having a lot of fun. I've been doing belly dancing, which is as horrific as it sounds, but it's fun. Uh, it is shockingly painful. And I'm really glad I don't have mirrors when I do it. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Dishes are going to get done by the end of each night. I don't care how aggressive I am about that, but something needs to happen with the dishes, emptying the dishwasher, loading the dishwasher, or having whatever I do have actually fitting in the sink where I can still put a cup in that sink and get water from my faucet. It can't be that thing where it's like reaching towards the heavens and it's like in the sink, but ready to encroach on the rest of my house with its plague. So uh, that's something solid. Uh, again, like the trash, get it fucking done. And then I'm going to like invite my friends over, you know, occasionally, because when I have uh, a friend over, I actually clean up my shit because I, uh, pretend that I do have it together and it kind of works sometimes ish. (laughs) So that's what I'm going to do. That's how I'm going to streamline my life. Next step. I'm going to create a step-by-step plan for each project. It's really easy in your head to go, okay, I need to write a Christmas special but what does that mean? That's pretty ambiguous. What, where, how am I going to like light the fire under me? How do I make sure I get it done in time and that I don't have to edit in like an hour and a half special in two days or something? Like that's not feasible, right? So I like to use the best self project action pad and you don't need anything fancy. You can just make bullet points. But basically I create a timeline with deadlines. And for the Christmas special, I worked backwards because I know I have the release date I want it to be. And then I know when I need to have it edited, and then I just trickle back that way. Naturally, I am already behind schedule, but at least I have it, and I can (laughs) maybe in a good way stress myself uh, with what's coming up and maybe be motivated more to get back on track, or at least I can recognize, okay, I'm going to have to shorten something later down the road. So that is something that helps me at least have a clear picture. Like I'm looking at my project action pad right now for this special, and I can see every single date and every single step that I need to take to get that project done, and it makes it feel less ambiguous and less scary, to be honest, because it's easy to just build something up as this huge project, but if you break it down into little steps, you're like, oh, Oh, okay, I can take that one step at a time. So I think, uh, you know, me knowing my November due dates I have and how to do it, I think it won't be as stressful uh, as it could be because I have given myself a lot of wiggle room. My plan for Nano is having an outline. That will definitely make things easier for me instead of having to, on the spot, just create 
narrative (laughs) and not end up hating what I do. That's a lot. And I used to be able to do it. But again, I'm in a situation where I'm going to be creatively strained and that's just not cute. So I do actually already have a functioning outline right now. I'll probably flesh it out a little more. And I think that'll just make me enjoy the writing experience even more because I won't be uh, doing that thing where I just stare at the blinking cursor before I go to write and just be like, I'm wasting so much time thinking. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I just, I'm I, maybe I'm wrongly assuming this, but I am just thinking I'm going to be highly frustrated <laughs> If I do that, so I'm making sure I do that. And I also want to be a little more consistent with my writing, even if I don't hit the 1,667 words exactly each day. I'd rather not do the thing where I take a week off and then write 10,000 words in a day. Like last year, I finished the remaining 20,000 words basically in three days, spaced out with weeks of doing nothing. I'd rather at least have like 300 words here and there then do nothing. And I think, you know, I'm still happy. I still had fun doing NaNo last year, but it kind of took away the uh, the joy. It's like I did NaNo in the span of like two weeks spaced out. So it wasn't this constant process. It was just, it reminded me of uh, doing a college paper the night before. And I think I'd rather be able to sit with the plot and have more fun with it instead of just trying to rush through, which again, had its own thrill. Don't get me wrong, but I would rather not ever, ever do that again. So yeah, I'm going to make sure I have a consistent plan and I'm going to make sure I have time each day to write, which connects back to me streamlining my normal life shit because I'll now have more time to do things instead of having to spend like two whole days putting my house back in order because I let it get so bad. For uh, my episodes... I need to have an idea before November happens so I have some of my life together. Like, I need to at least either record earlier in the week, like if I recorded on Thursdays and then try to edit at least starting on a Sunday, that would already give me so much more time than I give myself now. Um, I'm really proud I'm recording this on a Monday. Like, go me. It's not the Tuesday. I've been doing that for like the past three episodes. It's not cute. So very excited. And I already feel better just doing it two days before my episode releases. Imagine giving myself almost a week. I can't, I can't, but I will be living that life because I'm going to do that. And I might try to batch record again. um, And if my ideas are stagnant, then I will just try to take it one week at a time. But I am going to try to at least have maybe most ideas set set aside, even if I think it's crappy. I'm going to at least have uh, all the episodes thought of for November and I can go from there. (laughs) But I need to have that not feel so sporadic and scary because I do get scared as I approach a Wednesday, and I just have no idea what to think about or say. And then I think I put so much pressure on myself that I, my brain freezes and I can't think of anything. And it's just, it's not fun. It's not fun. And I ain't doing that shit in November. Okay, the third thing. On my list, I've called it maintain sanity. So I, I'm not going to lie, I don't remember exactly what the theme of this is. But I think it's more of a how to not beat myself up. <laughs> Uh, and make myself have uh, possibly the most success in terms of uh, what I, uh, how I go about approaching the projects. So one is I want I want the reward of knowing I won't cram at the last minute. So I need to hold on to that feeling. I need to remember that I highly enjoy having episodes planned beforehand, uh, not having to write ten to twelve thousand words in a day to catch up on something that's supposed to be delightful, not ignoring the Christmas special because it stresses me out, but actually sticking with it. These things make me happy and I can do it. So I need to remind myself that I do feel immense joy when I do that. Second thing, change my environment. It is very easy for me to get sick of my home because I basically work at my office and then I live on my couch. I think I need to be a little more diverse with where I hang out and do things. So fine, I work on my couch sometimes for these creative projects, but I think it's okay for me to return to my desk. I can do a different decoration or something, but I need to not live on my couch. That is not inspiring. That feels sad. And I sometimes have better ideas when I do allow myself to have a different environment. I get different vibes. I can put my head in the space of like, oh, it's creative time. It's not watch Frasier for three hours time. <laughs> I'm not as distracted by things. I don't have the option to go to Starbucks really anymore, but I think there are ways I can finagle this and I'm going to do it. I Mostly, I'm not staying on my couch for all of November. Third thing, I'm going to ask for help. 
And I've actually done that a lot already. I've asked for a lot of uh, friends brainstorming help on the Christmas special. I really cannot emphasize how despondent I was about it. Uh, I only kind of feel better now after talking to at least three different friend groups. And I think in the past, I've always just been like, oh, you know, it's this is like a silly thing. I can't ask people's opinions or I don't know if I should bother truly out of laziness. But I this year, I'm going to ask for help if I need it. Brainstorming ideas, questions about how to do something. I'm doing it. There's no point. I'm not going to do it by myself. Fuck that. Fourth thing, I'm going to allow some wiggle room with imperfectionism. As I told you before, I've never lost NaNoWriMo. That's pretty, that's a lot, yeah, that's a lot to put on my shoulders because it's kind of like, wow, I can't lose now. I have to keep winning and it's it's okay. I'm not going to always hit the word count each day or feel like I've done enough. Again, these are things that I've decided to put into my life and it's okay if they aren't great, if they aren't perfect. It's okay if my writing isn't excellent or if a draft of the special doesn't feel great or an episode I create doesn't personally feel like it's stellar. Uh, Because sometimes I have horrible judgment of what I think other people will enjoy. And I think it's important to show up and I will do my best. But since these aren't necessarily very important projects, if that makes sense, it's not something I'm getting paid for. Let's be real. I care about money and I'm not getting paid for it. I'm doing it for my soul. And so I want to make sure I can succeed But I don't want to break myself in the name of perfection. So if I don't hit nano this year, I need to accept that and it's okay. Because the heart of nano isn't hitting 50k. It's about the joy of writing. And I'm saying that and I don't believe it right now. I mean, I do, but I, you know, it's it's hard to let go of things like that. So I'm going to give myself wiggle room and I'm not going to beat myself up. The next important thing on my list is sleep. I sometimes try to do more in 24 hours than one human should, and I just stop sleeping. I'm someone who needs to sleep. I'm heavily affected by sleep. I get more anxious, get more in my head. I think that's when burnout can really start to happen. Again, my hamster is already sad with donuts. Uh, If I don't get sleep, that hamster is going to turn to whiskey, vodka, It's going to be a drunk, tired hamster. I can't function with that. So sleeping, I'm going to make that a priority. I'm going to have set (laughs) bedtimes-ish. Nothing after midnight is going to happen. So maybe that means I have one of those moments where my episode doesn't come out until a Thursday. I'm not staying out past midnight. I might not even stay up past 11 p.m. I don't know. But I'm going to prioritize sleep, which I haven't. Uh, personally done in the past two months and what do you know i have felt like poo go figure and then the last thing on this list of how to fucking keep my creative energy up and handle all these projects is i need to remember i do this because i want to have fun i have created these things because they do bring me joy and i love them and this is what sparks my soul this is what this is my raison d'etre if you will Creating content is my jam on this bread of life. (laughs) And even though I've put a lot on my plate right now, at the end of the day, I thrive on it. I enjoy it. And I actually truly think I'm going to have a blast this month, even though I have so much going on. It's going to be like I just took a five-hour energy, except every day. Maybe not like that. That's a lot. But I'm excited because I think November is going to bring my brain back to me. And I think I'm going to find my passion once more for a lot of creative things. And I'm I'm hoping that it'll be a great kickstart to keep things moving forward for me. So at the end of the day, I am here to have fun. And that's more important to me than perfecting and stressing about things that I have chosen to take on that do not have dire consequences if I don't do them. So that is my list of how to survive my November uh, and my November goals. I kind of focus more on what that shit entails. Um, As for the Mystery Life Project, I am not sure. It's not creative. Um, It's not necessarily something that's fun, but I think it will bring me joy 
but it's hard to uh, figure out maybe how to work that in. But I think maybe it can be a good break in between all of these different things, I guess. I don't know. How do you function with big life choices as you go about your frolicking and creative imagination land? I guess I will let you know. But I am very excited for my November, even though I am a little not quite whelmed, a little bit over it, over the whelm. My whelm cup is brimming and overflowing. <laughs> but I am excited. I think it's fun. I'm really excited to see what happens. I can't wait to write my book. I really can't wait to see what the fuck I end up doing for this Christmas special. Ah, who knows? And I am mostly just going to ride the waves. And if I crash, at least I... Nope, can't think of a positive. That was a really bad metaphor. Look, if I if I have some ice cream and then it falls to the ground after, you know, three uh, bites or whatever uh, from my cone, fine. I still have the ice cream and also I will pick it up and just keep eating it. So not sure how that translates from a metaphor into real life. So yeah, I'm a writer. <laughs> I write and I talk. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Angus IT. Uh, if you're doing nano, let me know. Uh, let's become buddies on NaNoWriMo. And I, you're definitely going to hear a lot of me on Twitter. Twitter's normally where I turn to for my nano woes and wins and insanity, mostly. So uh, if you want to, follow me on Twitter at Angus IT. That's Angus like the cow, I like the body part, and T like the drink. That's also the handle for my Instagram, where I post a lot of stories. It's almost like free bonus content in a way. It's a live demonstration of the shit show of my life. If you want more details, you can go to www.angus.com. SIT.com. That is where I post my show notes. God, I think that's all I have. My hipster witch line is out at teespring.com slash stores slash Angus hyphen. What's the name of my podcast? Angus hyphen I hyphen T. Oh my God. Did I literally forget the name of my podcast? Fuck me. Anyway, that's there. So I hope that you uh, suddenly wake up and you're in a musical and that's not like hell on earth for you. That's something you're excited about and you have a lot of big numbers and it's really cool. And then you uh, go to sleep and you wake up and you're like, did that really happen? And then it did. And then it's November 1st and you're like, I'm going to write a book about how I was in a musical and it's probably going to suck. Let's be real. But you know what? I'm happy uh, for that journey for you. I'm happy that that's your journey. Uh, And with that, this needs to end. (laughs) So I will talk to you next Wednesday. Bye, halfers. Bye.